We're heading off for the summer months in just a few days. There will be events, presentations, trade shows, and hopefully many new bike rides. Even though I've done this plenty of times, I still get anxious about forgetting something. There were so many things to finish up and prepare ahead of time that I was feeling stressed about taking a day off to go riding so close to our departure date. But I had to keep the promise I made to myself at the beginning of the year. One solo overnighter every season. And with the summer solstice approaching, it was time to make the next one happen. I chose to visit a natural park near our base, La Sierra de Irta, one of the last Mediterranean coastal ranges still untouched by construction. There is a maze of paths and trails, so I planned a loop that would take me through the mountains and end with an overnight camp by the seaside. It so happens I could have chosen a flatter route but I tend to feel that our ride is not fully complete without a bit of a challenge. However, I didn't anticipate the temperatures climbing to nearly 30 degrees Celsius, making every pedal harder than expected. I really struggle with the heat. Close to the summit, I had to push my bike for a couple of kilometers as the loose gravel and steep gradients were too much. By then, any enjoyment had faded. I was tired, too warm, and questioning my decision to put myself through that discomfort, thinking it would be fun. But after reaching the summit and taking a break for water and food, all the hardship was forgotten, and the satisfaction of overcoming the challenge made it feel worthwhile. Next, it was a well-deserved descent to the sea. With the historical town of Peñiscola as a backdrop, I continued my descent to sea level. The hiking section and technical trails on the way down had delayed me quite a bit, but I was still hoping to find a beach to swim and camp before dark. By this point, I was feeling so sweaty and sticky that all I could think about was getting there. At the first opportunity, I detoured to check out my options, and luckily, they looked great. I found a sheltered flat area close to the water, protected by the trees and bushes. It seemed like the perfect spot to settle down and claim my reward. Wild camping in Spain is generally not allowed, and one has to be especially mindful in protected natural areas. This is why I planned on bivouacking instead of setting up a tent. I had never slept only in my sleeping bag before. The thought of being so exposed to the elements and bugs always made me feel a bit uneasy. However, the clear skies and tranquility of the spot gave me a boost of confidence. A quick refreshing dip before sunset, and afterward, 
I'd prepare the sleeping setup. Everything was working out smoothly. I felt I had nailed my setup and as soon as it got fully dark, I planned to hop into my sleeping bag and go to sleep. By this point, all the pressure I had felt that morning, the stress of our upcoming trip and pushing myself through the heat and tough climbs, had dissipated leaving only a feeling of fulfillment and satisfaction. I took out my e-reader and dove into a new book I had been light-heartedly enjoying. When the moon came out, I tucked myself in. But, unfortunately, the evening didn't go as planned. Mosquitoes 1, Belen 0. Shortly after going to bed, I started hearing the high-pitched buzzing of mosquitoes around my ears. Not an issue, I thought, as I had a net covering my head and shoulders. The problem arose when they started stinging through my liner and clothes, forcing me to hide inside my sleeping bag, which was too warm to keep closed on that summer evening. Drenched in sweat and covered in bites of my face and body, I realized this wasn't going to work. There was no point in pushing through that nightmare out of pride. packed everything in the dark, jumping around to avoid any more bites, and hopped on the bike to cycle back to town. I felt so stupid and defeated. I had imagined there would be insects and mosquitoes, but I couldn't have guessed there would be a pack of them stinging through two layers of textile. Anyhow, I made my way back home in the dark, trying hard not to succumb to the itching, and spend the morning cleaning up while reflecting on the bittersweet experience. 
I couldn't stop thinking about how this could have been avoided, probably by bringing a tent. My intentions with bee walking were well-meaning, but if I ever attempt it again, I'll be more prepared. Despite the hiccup, I was glad to have attempted another overnight adventure. It cleared my mind and I felt re-energized, ready to make the most of the days before our departure. Every time I set out on my bike for a new adventure, I sense an initial resistance, but upon returning, I always feel refreshed and conclude it was a great idea. I look forward to trying again in the fall.